You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Could you talk to us about you were, if I remember right, you were kind of catapulted onto the national media scene from your coverage of the Volkswagen organizing drive. And now maybe maybe I'm I'm not um, maybe you were more prominent, but that's that's when I came in in into contact with your reporting. And uh, you know the Volkswagen organizing drive in Tennessee. Uh, it it failed. The work uh, the the union was uh, was not voted in, um, but there was so much pushback from local, state, and federal pol- politicians and publications in the area attacking not just the unions but the workers. And uh, Senator Corker threatened to block incentives to expand the plant if workers unionized. I mean, it was crazy the assault that that the workers endured there. But um, but ultimately, the drive did not succeed. The workers did not get a union there. So what can organizers learn from that campaign? Um, c- can you talk to us about that? And we got just to, to not to break in here, but we got about one minute. So, OK, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like I, I call it the anti-union trifecta. It's the it's the concerted uh, power of the state government combined with a hostile employer and these out of state corporate front groups. Right. So you had the state government. Remember last time in 2019, the governor of Tennessee went into the plant and led his own captive audience meeting. The company forced everybody into room and the governor sitting there with the CEO said, don't vote for the union. Those are the two most powerful yeah. people in, 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 in an everyday person's life, your state mm-hmm. governor and your boss telling you not to vote for a union. And then, you know, the, the company said all the things that they always say. They say, like, you know, we can close it down. We can move the plant. We, you know, and, and, and the state legislator was like, go for it. Do it. All, because all they are ide- so ideologically law. committed. All of which yeah. is against federal law, by the way. Absolutely. But this just goes to show you, right? Like, like corporations violate the law all the time with mm-hmm. impunity because we, we don't live in a country with strong, you know, labor law, unfortunately. And then on top of that, you had these big money groups that were swooping in and, and running field campaigns. So, you know, if you're going, if you're trying to organize in the South, you are organizing in the most extreme and politically hostile environment possible. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, Folks, you're listening to the Valley Labor Report. On the other side, we're going to bring Chris back for one more segment um, to talk about these protests that are that are happening all around the country uh, and and what labor's response to it should be. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking to Chris, uh, Chris Brooks some more after the break. This is the Valley Labor Report. Thanks for listening, folks. If you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can follow us online. We've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. You can search us on YouTube at The Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist, R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you appreciate our work and want to ensure that we can stay on the air, consider supporting us with a monthly donation on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report. 